Hey everyone, it's Brian from McDuff's Cool Stuff. Today we're going to be taking a look at my auction watch list from uh, J&G Auctions and we're going to be bidding on some items that have more of a historical kind of vibe to them. They're uh, some vintage antique things uh, because the sale that's coming up I have is at the uh, Historical Museum in my city in Dearborn, Michigan and at the historical museum it will attract people that are uh, you know kind of history buffs and that kind of thing because the museum will be selling some of their uh, items that were on display or that you no longer need uh, a lot of times they have like costumes and clothes in there and, and all kinds of things it's it's really an interesting sale i buy stuff there too sometimes that i can try and resell uh, on ebay so i'll be there for two days selling things and so i needed some more uh vintage and uh, historical looking stuff and so that's what I have for you today hopefully I'll win these items uh, if not then you know, I have to get whatever I can and, and try and make up the rest with my current inventory so take a look at my uh, my watch list and see what you think the first uh, lot I have that I'll be bidding on is uh, some religious items these are all Christian religious items there's uh, two crucifixes which looks like they perhaps were on a altar and then some other smaller pieces I can't exactly tell what some of them are there's a description of uh, what they are down at the bottom the next item is a brass camera lens this would be on a very old camera uh, probably like one of those that you would see in the old old movies and stuff where they would have like a big box and there'd be like a like a cover it almost looks like a blanket you put it over your head and you look through it this would be the lens that would likely go on something like that I'm thinking maybe not the exact one it's hard to tell there's no brand on it or anything but it's a four inch um, four inch long brass camera lens it just looks kind of cool <laughs> and you can see there's a side shot of, of it there and here's some uh, interesting bookends. Or it says they're the wood, but they look like they're brick. It's a uh, iron horse uh, bank, I believe, and seven inches tall. Uh, I've found other ones that look like this are made of different materials, so they're obviously using the same mold. I'm not really sure if it's super valuable or not, but you know, it looks like kind of an interesting piece. And you can see it's got the old type screws, just the slot screws in it. And here's a nice big piece of uh, malachite. Weighs uh, over two and a half pounds. And it's a nice, interesting looking one here. Uh, the reason I'm buying items like this, or I'm trying to buy items like this, is that I have a show coming up in a few weeks that is uh, part of the uh, Dearborn Historical Society. They're having a sale you know on their property they're selling some of their um, exhibit pieces and they have other vendors that are going to be there and so I wanted to bring things that were more historical kind of in nature so I'm hoping to get a lot of these I think these would probably sell the sale like that so uh, hopefully we have some good luck on that like especially this one here I thought this was kind of interesting uh, let me see if I can uh, maybe zoom it in for you just a bit there we are it's a uh, model of a steam engine and this is like the steam plant over here and it's and you there's a little furnace you fire something in there there's a smokestack I'm not sure what kind of fuel it uses I'm not gonna like that in my house but um, it burns something heats up the water produces steam and turns the engine and uh, makes this flywheel spin around here too I don't know that it generates electricity it, it I don't see any wires on it, but you know, let's see. No, I think it's just per, just to demonstrate the steam principle. Yeah, I don't see um, I don't see a dynamo or anything like that on there. So that's uh, just kind of an interesting piece. Uh, this is a uh, a model of the uh, this is a scale model of the Hindenburg. Let's see if there's a zoom in right there, and the stand is. Um, you know, has the dates and everything like that, what you're looking at. It's tiny little nacelles right here propelling the thing around. <laughs> All right. So we're moving on to this. Uh, there's a couple of train items in here. I normally don't buy train stuff because the, you really hate to say that the mark for that is kind of drying up because it's, 
it's usually older guys that are are into this kind of thing um so i i tend not to buy a lot like this for example i, I used to sell a lot of train things uh, for a friend of mine that had a lionel dealership and when he retired he had all this stock this is the controller it's called a transformer that came with the original train set like a smaller train set you would get this one with it and then they were hoping that you would upgrade to the bigger one that have like four controllers on it and everything so you control more tracks but there's a uh, light signal station here there's a um, water water tower and a house and I think this is like livestock it's just covered bridge okay so these pieces normally i would sell them individually this is not this transformer if it works hopefully it works even if you know even if it works it's really not worth very much because there are so many of them made and people generally don't want to control their train sets a single one like this let's say i have just like an oval or something like that, along that line here's another uh i kept saying i'm not gonna buy a train so this is an ho model of a Tyco. Um, log dumping car and when you hit the button here it dumps the logs into this um, catcher right here hopefully it all works and this is an interesting piece it's a um, they're calling a uh, a weather station but it's going to have like a hydro hydrometer to detect uh, humidity and uh, um, it's going to have probably a thermometer and I don't know what the third thing is there. Maybe it's a clock or something like that. But it's kind of cool. It's got like a nautical theme to it and all. Let's see if there's a... Yeah, this would be detecting the... Oh, the barometric pressure. That's what it is. Yeah, and here's the uh, temperature in Fahrenheit. And yeah, here's a hydrometer here. This is going to detect the humidity in the air. So it's got humidity, temperature, and barometric pressure. In old schooly fashion. <laughs> This is what I've always called it. It says it's explosion proof light. Sometimes you'll see them called vapor lights, and it's basically a light. Uh, in this case, it's got a round um, glass on it, and it would be used in an industrial setting wherever there was, um, I guess, fumes or I guess a chance of explosion or something like that. And this emergency this cage that goes around it and it's got a kind of an inter interesting industrial kind of vibe to it um, it's missing the box that it's connected to but that's not really so important uh, I imagine some would be using it for something else and mounting it on a wall and here is some uh, vintage burlap coffee sacks uh, you know there's ones that are from let's see from South America Panama let's see zoom in a little bit here on them uh, from different places kind of hard to exactly read what they are but uh, they have uh, kind of a nice they have a nice graphic on each one of them they're a bit faded you know they're these things were made they put a, didn't put a lot of um, you know money into printing on them and all that so those are just kind of neat someone could use some something like that for some project or for just putting them on display and if you know someone who is a coffee uh, aficionado I know someone um, you can get you they would probably like that as a present and this is an an old um, it's just an inkwell set pens before they had ballpoint pens you'd have to dip your pen in ink and this would these would store the ink in here and you put your pens in here and there was something in here I don't know what this was this is maybe for cleaning the pens or something like that so just interesting like I said, I'm looking for uh, old vintage antique kind of looking things and if you know someone who likes tools yeah this one would be a great tool one right here uh, this these are the bits this is called a brace and bit. I know a lot of people just call it a drill. It's actually called a base brace and bit. And you would hold on to the handle right here, and then your other hand would go on the top knob right there, and you would kind of you know, twist it around like this, drill holes very slowly. This drill here is actually called a breast drill, and you would actually lean against this uh, flat part here. It's actually kind of got a curve to it that goes like this and you rest it against your body and you press into it and you turn the crank and you hold the 
your other hand on this one right here and you would attach different bits to it. I don't know that these bits would go, usually you'd, well maybe you would use something, these are fairly large, they would go in here. This would be probably for drilling uh, smaller um, smaller holes perhaps, maybe these bits over here go with it. It's hard to tell. But it's just kind of an interesting uh, set of tools right here. These actually on their own don't really go for a lot of money. I usually sell these for about $10 each. But I would probably try and sell it maybe as a set with all the bits that go with it. So we will see how that goes. Now this here is, it's saying it's a molded milk bottle carrier. Now I looked this up on uh, Google Lens and it was telling me it was, it was a carrier uh, for food, it didn't necessarily mention milk, you know, given the indentations on the side and on, and on the top. So perhaps that it is, it's for that. This would help keep it, uh, keep the milk bottles cooler, I guess. Uh, you're not taking very far from the truck to the, to the porch uh, of the house. So anyway, it's, it's got a purpose, I imagine. I'll have to do some more research into it. But for right now, we're calling it a, uh, milk bottle carrier. <laughs> Here's a, uh, a Nick, a Nika, uh, eight track tape player and uh, I won't go into exactly all about eight track tapes and everything but this this format was around for a relatively short time uh, mostly I believe in the uh, 70s I had an eight track player a long time ago and uh, you'd, you'd pop your tapes right here in this slot and hit the play button this one actually you can record on the blank ones which is unusual you don't you usually see people playing eight tracks not necessarily um, you know, recording onto them, making your own, but I guess you could. It sounds a little more complicated doing it that way, but now this is a um, fishing uh, tackle box. It's got some fairly new stuff. I usually like to find old lures and things like that. That usually makes them more desirable. But if I can get it for right now, the current bid is $5, but it'll go up. If I could get it for, you know, kind of you know, 10 to $15, hopefully, you know, if it goes much, much higher than that, it's not really worth uh, picking it up, but it's just a, a nice uh, kind of a vintage toolbox with some stuff in it. Usually I can sell this for at the flea markets for about $30. So I, I have to keep it under 15 if I can Let's see if there's any more pictures. Yeah. It's showing you what's in there. These are all newer lures and some line and everything. It's nice. You can buy the whole thing and you're pretty much ready to go fishing. This is, uh, Star Wars dual lightsabers. Uh, it was one that Count Dooku used in uh, one of the movies. I don't know which one it was. Here it says only one side lights up, but I'll fix that. You know, I, I've I have a whole bunch of these that I'm selling for somebody else, and they are um, pretty easy to fix. Usually, what happens is someone leaves uh, the the battery in them, and and it causes corrosion. But it does say one side lights up, so. Not too sure what's going on uh, with the other side, but hopefully I'll take it apart and take a look at it. So it probably won't go for a much. No one's buying it yet. The bid's zero. <laughs> now this is the thing that's probably the most valuable thing. And I was looking at it. I thought it was some kind of like a scientific instrument or something like that. But it, it turns into an oven. And I'm going to zoom in on that for you too so you can see this thing. Now it looks like, and now we go, oh, now it's a pizza oven. Uh, these things on eBay were selling for five and six hundred dollars each. Now, this one is used, you can see that there's some use around here and all that, and that could probably be cleaned up a bit. But it's got the um, the pizza peels and the well, I think it's another pizza peel over here. There's the uh, propane attachment right here, it's got the all you need is a tank to put it on there and you'll be making pizzas. It makes them, from what I've read, it makes them actually fairly quickly. So here it says, yeah, even they put in the description, cooks a pizza in about two to three minutes. I'm thinking like a, a frozen pizza, but, you know, anyway, if you could you could put in um, your own pizzas in there. I imagine if you were to spend that kind of money on this, you're making your own pizza. You're not buying a frozen pizza to do that. So um, it says it includes a uh, KitchenAid pizza screen and a turning peel. So it's all in there. Really cool item. If you're really into pizza, this will be for you. So hopefully I'll be able to sell that. I'm going to try and sell that online. 
And I wasn't sure what to make of these, why they had these orange jumpsuits. And now at first I thought it was somebody in prison. They kind of looked like something you would wear in prison. Uh, I don't really know. But it says here that they're polyester, which kind of makes me want to think that they're used in like some kind of like a, a for safety reasons, you know, you'd wear this, you know, it was just buttoned up like this, you know, or maybe they're used in prison. I don't know. For their polyester, they're probably um, used to keep like paint or something off you. But well, anyway, I looked them up and they they were selling for, well, no one's bid on them yet, but you know, these for each one of these probably sell for about $30. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, there's another one that had, these are mediums. There's an extra small in there. I didn't I didn't save the extra small because it's an unusual size to have. And I can never have enough knives. So here's a, a set of folding knives. <clears throat> this, I don't believe, it looks kind of like the, the, the Swiss Army knife symbol, uh, you know, Victorinox. I don't really think it is, though. I'm looking at it, it kind of looks like There's one I've seen that has like a symbol that looks like this. Um, and it's not the original thing, but e either way, they're, they're pretty cool. Um, just by having three knives, I, like this is probably this whole set here is worth about forty or fifty dollars to me um, in sale. So hopefully, it, it'll it'll sell. You know, if I, especially if I can sell it um, directly to someone without having to pay eBay fees. Yeah, that's always a good thing. So what do you think, everyone? Do you see that there's anything that uh, I'm really uh, making a mistake on? Or, you know, do you think that I, I'm not really, you know, hitting the mark here? My my audience is going to be people that are into uh, history. And so I thought maybe this would uh, be the best way to get some uh, some items by being able to kind of pick and choose. And I can usually get pretty good prices from this auction house. You bid online and then you go ahead and pick the items up uh, for me it's about a 45 minute drive to get them but the the name is because the people that work there are really great um, it's called j and g auctions and if you live in the detroit area you may want to check them out and uh, their their website is uh, just j and g auction services com and i'll put the link in the description below and if you have any comments feel free to leave them for me i read them on i really enjoy reading uh, your comments and i could use a few more of them but i haven't made why, which is probably why I'm not getting a lot of comments. So, anyway, thanks for watching, everyone. And then I'll be posting some more videos um, in the near future about some uh, sales related kinds of uh, topics. Uh, one is going to be on uh, making uh, barcodes uh, for your products and SKUs and things like that. If you're into selling, that, that'll be a really good one. And uh, but this one's just going to be about things, and I'll, I'll do a follow up video on this and see which items I get because I won't get all of them because people will bid you up on these at the last minute. So anyway, thanks for watching, and please like and subscribe.